Okay, we are not live for the Dynasty Saturday Night Five. This is a Monday evening, and we're doing a, a pre-recording because uh, this weekend is a little little tough. Uh, I think next weekend's going to be a little tough too. We're here to talk about Dynasty Fantasy Football, including uh, the quarterback landscape therein. Please make sure you subscribe, rate, and review on the uh, Going for Two podcast audio feed. If you're watching here on YouTube or elsewhere, uh, please make sure that you subscribe to the channel. Like the video, comment on the video, et cetera, et cetera. I am Brian Ford. I am joined by my usual co-host, Josh Walker. Josh, how you doing? Doing great. I hate that we're going to be missing the next two weeks, but I'm happy that it's for live drafts for Scott Fishbowl. So next time I'll be on air, I'll have at least half of my team drafted. Yeah, so that's so, exciting. So you're gonna you're in the Atlanta live draft uh, bundle there. Yep, Saturday the eighth. Yeah, I'm in uh, New York City on the 15th, Ooh. so we're. Y'all are likely going to get a pre-record again uh, next week uh, as as well. Um, and uh, speaking of Scott Fishbowl, might as well say it now, right? Like, join the Going for Two Discord. We're running um, Scott Fishbowl mocks like every 42 seconds, it seems. So uh, make sure that you, you know, go to goingfor2.com, little thing on the corner, bottom right. You'll see the little purple Discord thing. Hop in the Discord. Hella channels, including one for this show. And, of course, as I said, all the Scott fishbowl stuff for those of you who may forget uh dynasty saturday night five even when we pre-record on mondays uh we we use lists of five as a way to talk about what we're doing with uh with dynasty fantasy football and tonight yeah it's still night even though it's so bright out gosh i love the summer speaking of i apologize folks if uh, this is the season where you might be hearing a, a low hum of air conditioning uh, <laughs> coming through the, the mic. So, uh, you know, but uh, that, that, that's what it is. Anyway, so tonight we're going to be talking about um, quarterbacks, right? Uh, we did a, an episode on uh, affordable uh, running backs. We did a wide receiver episode as far as startup values go. So we're going to sort of kind of pick apart a uh, quarterback. Uh, we, we play mostly in, in super flex. I think I might have one one QB league left. So, um, you know, that's kind of the environment that we're talking about. And so therefore the position is highly valuable. You're looking to get a lot, uh, you know, uh, you know, a couple good ones in your startup, et cetera, et cetera. So that's kind of where we're, we're coming from in general, Josh, what are you doing with, um, with the quarterback position, especially now in, in startup season? Um, and, uh, how many, um, do you try to grab, uh, where do you like to grab them, et cetera. And by, by, by where do you like to grab them? I mean, in the draft, not on their body. <laughs> okay, I was about to go a completely different direction, so you got me on track there. <laughs> um, no, so I'm very big on if I'm in the first eight picks, and I'll talk about this a little bit later. If I'm in the first eight picks, I'm getting one of my top eight quarterbacks. Um, and that ends at Fields and Lawrence, you know, the rest of the regular guys, Herbert, Burrow, Jackson, Hurts, Allen, Mahomes. So I'm getting all of them in the first round, first eight picks. If one of them fall to me, I'll still take them, but I'm definitely going to take them before I take a position player. And then if I – obviously, if I don't take one first round, I'm definitely going to take one second round, probably Dak Prescott, Sean Watson, maybe even Kyler. Um, I, overall, I try to get three starters. I have a tier down here that has like guys like Ritter, Howell, Jordan Love. I try and get one of those on my bench. That way – uh, when an inevitable injury comes, you still have someone that you know, as long as they're not injured, are getting snaps and actually starting. So it's not a huge minus if you lose one quarterback, just a small, as opposed to putting in a bench receiver into your super flex. So I try and get three starters. I have them tiered out based on QB1s, QB2s, and potential QB3s. So I try and get three good ones and two within the first three or four rounds. Yeah, uh, same. You know, I will even uh, trade up if I have to to get – that second one in the late first or, you know, early mid second, whatever it is. Uh, although there, are, there is some value slipping down the boards now with, you know, especially uh, uh, Kyler Murray comes to mind. Dak Prescott comes to mind yeah. as guys who are, who are sliding in startups, but I'll do that. I know some people say, well, you know, if the board dictates that I take, you know, Chase or Jefferson, then maybe I kind of quasi punt at the position. And, uh, you know, my QB one is going to be golf or cousins or Russ Wilson later. And, I'm just not comfortable doing that in a super flex mm -hmm. in, in a dynasty in a dynasty format. Um, so I will always lean quarterback, and that's one reason why I have very little Jefferson and Chase in my portfolio. Because like, as much as there's like eight quarterbacks I feel really good about, 
right? Or maybe 7.75 quarterbacks I feel really good about, right? Um, I still think I would take maybe 10 to 14 of them before I would take uh, a, no, a non-QB, you know, because I think, just think they're that important to, to set your foundation in a startup and they're going to be more expensive outside of the startup. So I think you just kind of have, have to do that. That's, that's the way I, you know, uh, kind of, kind of approach it. No, so you're even bigger on the QB than I am. Cause if I only get one, but I get like Jefferson and CD lamb, I can wait and get Gino or somebody, but that's definitely my QB too. I definitely get a QB one within the first two or three rounds. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. And, and I, in some ways, I'm in the minority, but also when you, when you look at you know the, the the draft board after a startup, it's like we're all just like grabbing quarterbacks in the first round or so, you know, except for like maybe two or three people, you know, who are sprinkling in Bijan and, and Jefferson and Chase and and so you know, but it's hard to zig when people zag at quarterback in a super flex, you know. I don't know, yep. maybe, maybe that's where like the risk averse part of my dynasty personality comes in because I, I i'm not completely risk averse like some people are but i can be in some situations and maybe that's part of it yeah another part going back to our last episode where we like those wide receivers that you can get between the sixth and like tenth round if you don't get two quarterbacks you're having to get quarterbacks there and i just think there's a lot better value on the board elsewhere besides you know getting a quarterback there so i'd rather get two studs and then get a bunch of the wide receivers through those rounds where like gino stafford all them go you know all right so before we get started with unpacking our our five questions uh today's show is brought to you by underdog fantasy the industry leader with things like best ball leagues tournaments private leagues pickums they've got uh i don't are we allowed to say props they've got uh player total i think over unders oh no we can't say over under the higher lowers yeah i don't know they they've got player totals that you can uh guess on with money um because <laughs> it's not gambling uh and uh but anyway i i i'm really getting into this um the the, the puppy the scott fishbowl satellites on there mm-hmm. all, money, all the money goes to charity best ball mania i've been drafting way too many teams and now they've got this weekly winners thing where they're like giving out prizes every week instead of like seasonal prizes and tournament at the end so like now they suck me in with a few of those and it's like Every every time I just I open up the underdog tab or the app, I've got I'm on the clock in like three or four drafts, and it's kind of it's kind of disgusting how much money I've spent after going like I don't know how long saying like ah, I don't really like best ball, and now here I am. Right? Why are we talking about this? Uh, well, uh, not only is underdog awesome, but if you are a first time uh, underdog user, if you if you are a new account, a new sign up. Uh, you can go to underdog.com or the app and use the code GF2 uh, and get a, a first-time deposit match of up to $100. So what does that mean? You're a first-timer. You deposit some money. Underdog will match that. They'll match that up to your first $100. Uh, so if you're a high roller and you're you know dropping in $10,000 like like Josh does, and right now he's looking at his phone on, on, on his $500 underdog draft that he's in, you know, you know, they're only they'll only match up to your 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 first hundred. Uh, if you're watching here on the video, that's what the fancy little QR code uh, is for. You can it'll take you right to Underdog, and you can start uh, playing, deposit some money, use GF2 as your promo code. Maybe start winning some. Maybe get in a league with me. And in two drafts, I took Kelsey as my first pick, and the. There's no reason for the person who picked right before me in the second round to take Mahomes. No reason whatsoever, and they take Mahomes and ruin my stack. No, that happens to me more times than not. I'll get, you know, I'll get Chase, then Higgins, and then you know Burrow comes around, and some guy who's already got two quarterbacks gets Joe Burrow. It's like you don't need him. I need him. I need this. Yeah, I, but you know, it's kind of like you know, I, I don't, well. We're getting angry at people for kind of not knowing about stacking, you know what I mean? Which is kind of like, which maybe means uh, we're probably at an advantage anyway in that draft. I don't know. Man, let's, or nah. there's somebody in there who just doesn't care about their money. is just tr- looking at stacks and trying to destroy them for everybody. <laughs> that, that's true, too. Yeah. <laughs> the the stack Grinch in your, yep. in your underdog. 
oh, this guy really wants a home. So <laughs> let me ru- let me ruin his life in, in an environment where he can't send me a DM exactly. and complain. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so we mentioned that there, we met- did. Did you just hear? Did I go out? Did I cut out there for a second? Yeah, I didn't know if it was you or maybe you're good now. Okay. Uh, so we mentioned that there's uh, about eight quarterbacks or so that that we're pretty comfortable with. The reason I said seven point seven five is even though I have Fields ranked seventh above Lawrence, there's a world in which you know, that, that goes south, right? That's a, that's an upside rank. That's a ceiling rank. You know, jury is still out on his passing, although we expect it uh, to improve. So let's start with, with, with that top eight, right? Um, my question for uh, Dynasty Land is, is Hertz in the Mahomes and Allen tier? Um, that's question number one uh, that, that I'm doing in my list of five. Um, I'm going to say no. Uh, I love Hertz, and you know it take love Hertz. Oh, y- y- you know it took me a long time to get there. Uh, you know, uh, for sure. Um, but at the same time, he's essentially done it for like one, two ish seasons, right? Um, Mahomes much longer track record. Allen longer track record, perhaps better overall offense, uh, and so I think they're in that that tier, uh, especially because, you know, I think they're also better as far as, as passing goes. Uh, for me, Hertz is at the top of that next tier. Um, and so I don't have um, Hertz in there with the, uh, with, with uh, Mahomes and Allen. Although I see a lot of people do. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, he's, he's in that tier and I've teetered with even putting him ahead of Josh Allen. And the main reason for that is I just think that offense is just so much better and I think the play calling is a little bit better to what Hurts does. And I think they're not going <clears> to <throat> put him into more situations where he has to do more than he's capable of doing. And, you know, the Eagles are just stacked. They have the best offensive line in the league, yeah. two top 15 wide receivers, and a really good top five tight end. So that's that's mostly it. I don't think he's necessarily better or more electric than Josh Allen, but <clears throat> team dynamic does go in. And he was, he was better at passing last year than Josh Allen. So I don't – I'm not expecting him to – fall off a cliff or to really drop off too much so i, I have them in the same i have them at third though so i do have alan and mom's ahead so are any concerns about uh shane steichen leaving to to the colts or since it's essentially a sirianni offense then we kind of don't really care too much about that just kind of pick up where they I, left off as long as sirianni's there i think he probably picked up with what striken did enough to not change it too much so i don't think he's going to start doing things <clears throat> That they didn't do or that Hertz isn't capable of doing. Right on. And so then your first question kind of picks up where we leave off with that with that uh first tier. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah it's um how big is tier two and who is in it? So this this tier for me is the last set of guys that I'm happy with as my QB one. Mm-hmm. And guys I'm getting in the first round before I get um, a position player. And in the order it goes, Lamar Jackson at four. I bumped him up because the new offensive coordinator higher um, and better weapons. And then Joe Burrow, Justin Herbert, Trevor Lawrence, and then Justin Fields at eight. Um, and that's that's my tier two. That's I'm drafting all those guys before I even think about Justin Jefferson or uh, Jamar Chase. Okay. Um, any reason for um, like? making that like one big tier instead of like separating them out into two, you know, because as much as we rank, we also have a tier. So we're essentially saying, you know, in, in, in there are worlds in which we're as happy taking our eighth guy as we are our, you know, fourth guy, you know, um, any, any reservations about lumping them all in together and not, not cutting them up into two tiers or, or it's just that the tier just has a name for you. And that name is, last of the studs yeah it's just more the quarterback situation and me being more comfortable with knowing what guys are as opposed to like running back so i don't really deviate from it as much so as mm-hmm. long as one of these guys are here before i get a position player i'm perfectly happy with them like i think fields has more upside than maybe uh some of these guys like Justin herbert and burrow who don't run as much but i still have them at eight because like you said there's plenty of chances for that not to work out but 
if you know I have if Fields is there, I'm taking him. I don't mm-hmm. know if that answers your question, but yeah, that, they all have similar outcomes for me. Yeah, it, it does because I'm about to talk about like how I don't have them all in one, but it, but essentially I do because like this is the eight we're all comfortable like at pretty much everybody's top eight in some order that that we're comfortable with, and I think the difference for for me and you is that we'd probably take all of them before we started oh, yeah. taking Chase or Jefferson. Uh, so does it really matter that I've split them up into two mini tiers? Like yeah. I don't, you know, yeah. I don't know that That's it really exactly matters right. much. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so. Uh, it's, tell me the order you have them in again. So you have um, <clears throat> Lamar, Lamar, fourth. Lamar, yep, then Burrow uh-huh. at five, then Herbert, then Lawrence, then Fields. All right. So yeah. Um, so Herbert and the Herbert Burrow question is is one that people have a, a lot. So so for what it's worth, my tier two is uh, Hertz and then Burrow and then Herbert and then yeah. you know next next couple guys. So. What's the um, I mean, again, it's like it's a tier, so it's a tier, right? But you know, what's the just for for funsies, what's the case for for um, you know, for for Burrow over, over Herbert? I mean, we both have it, but you yeah, know, just, honestly, I think Herbert's a little more talented. I think he has better arm talent. I think he's I think he's still a year younger, maybe, but it's all comes to offense around him. And you know, there's a world where uh, Chase and Higgins get hurt or miss some time, but I think that's a lot more likely for 30 year old Keenan Allen and Mike Williams who just had back surgery. And then you got Quentin Johnson and Josh Palmer as your first two wide receivers, and they weren't as great as an offense last year, really. They dink and dunked a lot, they didn't really push the ball down the field. So I think that will change, but if they miss, if they're missing Allen or Mike Williams, I think it's going to be a huge hit to the offense more so than the Bengals, who still have Boyd or Smith. Yeah, and those two guys tend to m- are older and tend to miss more time. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, like you said, you know, with the new offensive coordinator, like we could see we could see Justin Herbert be like you know top two three quarterback yeah. in, in 2023 as far as like you know points per game or, <clears throat> or whatever goes. So so why um, you know you mentioned um, Lamar being four, he's ahead of Burrow and Herbert for you. Um, yeah. For me, he's not, and I'm about to talk about that in, in a second. So what's why Lamar ahead of those two? Because it one of the biggest things that bugs me about Lamar Jackson and the talk, especially on Twitter, is people talking like he's just a running back that can throw decent. But he's more than a decent thrower. He's really he's really accurate. He's just not had good options. He's not had he's had slow receivers. He's had a coach that wanted to run over fifty percent of the time. And I mean he's he's blown away the NFL in rush yards over the past three or four years. He has like six or seven hundred more than Josh Allen. And I do think they're not going to run him as much. So I don't think, you know, it's hard to tell how much of his injuries are actually injury or him just being frustrated with the situation. So I, I just think it's going to be a completely better year. They have a lot better weapons. And I'm, ex- I'm excited because they got likely and Andrews running the, uh, the 12 scheme that he runs. So I'm excited. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So my question for folks, or, you know, my question number two on our list is, Lawrence versus Fields versus Lamar. Because for me, it's Lamar 6, Fields 7, and Lawrence 8. I think Lawrence's floor might be safer than Fields, but I think the rushing probably gives Fields uh, a bigger overall ceiling. I think it, it's similar to Richardson and Hurts in that and, – and Lamar – in that he only has to pass so well – in order for him to be an elite fantasy producer, right? Um, whereas the the rushing that Lawrence would have to do, right, to make up that gap is really big. And staying with the rushing that he has, the passing he would have to do is like astronomical, right? So I think that's, that's why I have um, – Lawrence uh, a, a tick below below fields but you know um I think for 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 Lamar being for me below Burrow and Herbert it's about I want to see it with the new offensive coordinator and while yes he is um I don't want to say underrated as a passer but he get he gets too much hate there are some throws that he struggles with and I mean, listen, the quarterbacks all have weaknesses, right? But you know, uh, he struggles with 
throwing uh, outside the numbers, you know, a lot and struggles throwing outside the numbers, particularly a little bit longer down the field. And I think that can that can really limit what you what you're able to do with an offense. I also want to take the time to note that um, this idea of, oh, well, he, he gets injured, right, because he's missed games, you know, you know, last two seasons, right? That's just the bad side of variance. Um, I want to give credit to the person, and I forget who tweeted it, but um, they ran a, you know, a whatever, like a study on, um, you know, like mobile quarterbacks and, and not mobile quarterbacks. And yeah, like, that's all this. you know, um, they, they get injured at roughly the same rate, right? I forget that they used variables like um, designed runs and scrambles as far as like what mobility. Anyway, so like the, the mobile guys, you know, get injured at, at essentially the same rate and that and that when you're a statue and take a hit in the pocket, that can lead to an injury uh, as much or more than being a mobile quarterback can. So I want to dispel that myth for folks. Like, yes, he did miss two years in a row. So that individual player, maybe you have a little bit of concern about. But if you're gonna if you're gonna say, oh well, mobile quarter the mobile quarterbacks have a playing style that gets them hurt, I don't know that that's really true. And I kind of was on the fence about that before I saw some of those numbers. Um, but so so anyway, so yeah, I want to see it right. He does have weaknesses mm-hmm. as a passer. And while I do like the the, the weapons there, I, I'm probably higher on Bateman than, than most folks. Um, you know, OBJ might have something still left in the tank. I'm not huge on Zay Flowers, but, you know, I can't deny that he's got he's got talent. I like Dobbins. Um, I like Likely and, and Andrews, right? So I like those weapons. I just think the, the overall offensive potency that we've seen with um, Herbert and Burrow, I think is right now safer for me. I could totally see at the end of this year – my rankings reflecting Lamar having moved up into that, you know, bro and, and Herbert range. But for now, he's below them at the top of that tier of six, seven, eight, and then it's Fields and then it's Lawrence. No, that's that's perfectly understandable. I've always been a lot higher on Lamar Jackson going back three or four years when I was just doing one QB redraft league. So that, there is some, I will admit, some bias in there. I just really like him. So I don't I don't blame you at all. And it is kind of contradictory because usually early on I like four quarterbacks, but he's the one I have ranked for a ceiling. So, mm. you know, it's funny. I think in the last four years, there was only one year where the Ravens were uh, league average in pass rate over expectation. I mean, they just did not throw. Right. Yeah. And they ran 11 personnel at like the lo- like a like a mind numbingly lowest rate in the league. So, you know, certainly we, we think 2023 will be better. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I watched a bunch of UGA games living in Athens and watching. I know college is, is different from the NFL, but I think uh, Munkin's really good at getting like knowing his player strengths and then working towards that because he made Stetson Bennett a Heisman finalist. He had no business being in that room with those other people. So. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the, the, the elite eight, if you will, right? Let's yeah. they not maybe they're not all elite yet, but let's just call them the elite eight because it's fun to say, right? So then outside of that, you know, it, 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 things get a little murkier. I think I think there's a clump of guys that people have right after them, in some order or another, um, and and I think you you have a question to to deal with that I think a lot of people are debating the eight the. Eight, EP says one thing, you know, um, I don't know if, if that's true for both of us. So why don't you go ahead? All right. So I'm going to talk about the decision between Kyler Murray and Deshaun Watson. And I've really come a long way on Deshaun Watson because when he first got, first came back from suspension, you know, I was I was probably letting off the field stuff go into my, my thinking a little bit too much. But looking at his numbers, and he's still only 27. I do give the edge to him over Kyler Murray. Uh, none of it has to do with Kyler's size or him playing Call of Duty too much. But I just think Deshaun Watson only being two years older, not out right now for injury, and I think he's on the better team. I just like Deshaun Watson. He, he shook off some rust last year. He didn't look great, but that's expected when you miss a whole year from football, especially at the quarterback position. So I do like Deshaun better. I really like Cleveland's uh, – 
actually uh, pass catchers. You got Amari Cooper, uh, Peoples Jones, and one of my favorites, Elijah Moore. And they're also really liking Joe Pugh. So I think he just has a better weapons and uh, a better team overall. And there's some there's some questions about Kyler being with Arizona. They could go for Caleb Williams if they tank, and then if he moves somewhere else or has Caleb Williams on the team, it's definitely going to hurt his uh, his draft stock. Yeah. Um, just for for funsies. Um, so Anthony Richardson's going off the board at QB nine, according to. Um, uh, bulletproof ADP, which pulls from sleeper drafts, um, mm-hmm. DLF ADP, which pulls from uh, mock drafts, uh, has Richardson uh, also at uh, hold on a sec, at quarterback nine, uh, and Deshaun Watson at ten, and and bulletproof has Deshaun Watson at ten too. Murray has slid down to thirteen in bulletproof available on average in the early third round and in um dlf he's quarterback 14 Tua has snuck ahead of him real anti kyler crowd doing those mocks for 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 dlf so i too have watson one rank above kyler murray it's nine versus ten it's a lot of the things you said it's baking into kyler that you are missing six to eight weeks we think at least of, of 2023 and that he's coming back to a dumpster fire offense right so you know we we, we kind of have, have to think about that but when you see the price right kyla murray is just disgustingly cheap right and if i have them that close in my mind i'm probably going to take Murray in some startups, like wait for him, you know, and see where he see how far he's sliding, then then taking Watson, um, because I kind of I can. The question then becomes, though, am I essentially, I want to say punting twenty twenty three, but now later on in the draft, do I have to take a third quarterback earlier to cover over that six to eight weeks of Kyler if I'm not gonna say? intentionally at some point in the draft i'm probably not competing in 2023 right so does the does the price difference mean enough for you to maybe wait on and take kyler instead or does that complication of him missing those eight weeks make you say ah, i'll just go with watson no oh, you took the words right out of my mouth with that i was just gonna say if you go with kyler you're basically you're not assuring that you're not going to win in 2023, but you're going to make it a lot harder because you're going to have to go and draft a quarterback, a third quarterback, a lot sooner than you might want to because I'm not comfortable having the tier I said earlier, like Howell Ritter as my QB2 right out of the bat. Yeah. Um, so if you do that, I do feel like you should be playing for 2024 or 2025. I mean, it's not impossible to do, but if if you're not trying to win right now, I'd much rather have Kyler Murray at his cost. Okay. Um. My next question is about another short-ish quarterback, uh, and that's um, that's Russ Wilson. Um, so is Russ going to bounce back? That's the question uh, that I have is question number three. And my answer is I think pretty confidently yes. Now, there's a lot of context to what happened with Russ last year. Yes. He's aging. Yes, there's a certain type of quarterback that he has to be, right? Um, and that's, you know, usually like moving the pocket more, um, not throwing as much over the middle as he does to the outside, things like that, right? Um, but the context of, of what went south in, 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 in Denver with, with Russ last year, I, I think is important to consider, right? You know, He's not going to be what he used to be when he was younger. But when we look at, you know, pretty bad coaching, not only bad coaching, but like, you know, a, 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 in a way that like refused to to have the plays, you know, match really what what Russ was was really good at, you know, but also in a way like gave Russ probably a little too much control over the offense, you know, like. You know, people were saying, let Russ cook. Pete Carroll was saying, be careful what you wish for. And we kind of saw that, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, 
also, you know, you're learning a, a new offense. You're in a new city, et cetera, et cetera. There were reports about him being out of shape-ish, whatever. Right? So why do I think he's going to bounce back? Because a lot of that is getting cleansed off, off you, know, uh, you know, cleansing our palate from that bad taste, right? We have a um, second year in a new city. We have a pretty secure contract. In fact, in fact, a contract that's so secure they can't get the hell out of it. Like, you know, so he's not going anywhere. Um, and they're bringing in one of the best offensive minds in football, and, and that's Sean Payton. And as much as Sean Payton has, like, the Sean Payton way that he wants to do things, he's also good enough to put his players – in a position to do to succeed you know to shape things to to their skills right and when you when you throw that in with that toward the end of the year russ was improving and all reports say he was winning back that locker room um you know i think russ is due for a bounce back this year um i have him currently ranked as my quarterback uh 14 which is Pretty well above, uh, I think, uh, where a lot of folks have him. Uh, I've seen him as low as, like, I think 21 or something on, on KTC. Uh, as far as um, bulletproof ADP goes, uh, he is quarterback 22 going at the 708, right? Uh, and so if you are going to not grab two quarterbacks early in those first three or four rounds, when you tell me that I can get Russell Wilson at the 708, like a full round after Goff, round and a half after Cousins, and three rounds after Danny Dimes, I'm taking it, right? We like Judy. We like Mims. We like Peyton. We like Dulcich. We like Samaj P. Ryan. We like Javante Williams if he can come back and be 85, 90% of his, his old self. You know, we – have reasons for optimism uh, for Russ. He's not going to give you like a lot of rushing, uh, but you know when it comes to who your QB two could be, you could do worse if you miss out on grabbing two really good ones early. And so, I to me, Russ is kind of a buy, especially at that price, right? Um, when I see him, you know, ranked and being taken where he is uh, in in ADP. Uh, and in, in, in DLF ADP, he's down at quarterback 23, so it's even worse. Like, I just I just don't get having Russell Wilson below guys like Carr, Pickett, Goff, Cousins, Jordan effing Love. I can start to flirt with the idea of Danny Dimes. I don't have it, but I get it, right? And I would say also he shouldn't be behind some of these rookies either. So, But anyway, that's my rush spiel. Uh, tell me why I'm wrong. Uh, I don't think you're completely wrong in saying Russ is going to bounce back. I have him at 20, and the guys I have him behind, I'm pretty comfortable with having him behind. I have him behind Geno, Goff, Cousins, and Daniel Jones, and then Stroud Young. So I'm happy with where I have him. I do have him above guys like Carr, Pickett, and those guys. Um, so a few things that came to mind as you were saying that. I think looking at Russell Wilson – his success with the Seattle Seahawks and then Gino, I think we might just be underrating just how good Pete Carroll is at coaching quarterbacks and offenses. And I think you saw that with Hackett. It was the, uh, Hackett was a horrible coach, and he did not put Russell in good situations. But Russell Wilson also was missing guys wide open over the middle of the field. He was missing reads. And there were so, certain things that I didn't think was just bad coaching. Now, Nathaniel Hackett was more than a bad coach. He's one of the worst coaches I've seen since Urban Meyer. So I think that is part of it, and I've wiped out about 70% of last year for Russ. Um, but I did see some things like no more, not as much mobility and just missing easy reads that I'm a little more hesitant, but I think he's going to be better. And I think Sean Payton's the perfect coach to come in and uh, play to Russell's strength. So I do think he's going to be better. But I'd still rather have uh, – off cousins and Daniel Jones. Speaking of, what's your next question? My next one is the tier of the last group of guys I want for my QB two. That's uh, Danny Dimes, White, otherwise White Vic, um, <laughs> Kirk Cousins, Jared Goff, and Derek Carr. Um, so I have them like I just said. I have them ranked uh, Daniel Jones, uh, and then. Goff and then Cousins, and that's mainly due to 
to the ages of Goff and um, Daniel Jones. They're still in their late twenties. Goff showed really good ability with the Rams, and he showed it last year also with the Lions. So I actually really like Jared Goff as my QB two. Derek Carr is the one I'm the lowest on, and that's just because I don't know exactly what type of quarterback he is. I like the weapons he has at New Orleans more than what he had at Las Vegas, but at the same time, I think he has the lowest floor because I think he's the one of those guys who could just not be as productive. Um, so I do have Carr last. Cousins, he's got Jefferson. He's got a really good offense. I like him, but his age is a little concerning. He's, I think he's, what, 33, 34? Yeah, I think 34 going on 35. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that's not as bad for a quarterback, but that does knock him for me, and he would be the next one if he starts to fall off. I'll definitely drop him in my rankings. I might have to root Russell Wilson up if he does well. But that's how I have him. I'm very happy with uh, Daniel Jones and Goff's my QB, too, but I'm content with Cousins and Carr. And that's about, about the end where I want my QB, too, is Derek Carr. Anything else so, with that I don't want? Yeah, just – uh, uh, cousins will be 35 uh, next month, August 19th. So happy yeah. early birthday, Kirk. He's, he's still got two or three years, but it's just keep an eye on him, make sure he doesn't, you know, it's accuracy, deep throws, and zip on the ball doesn't drop. All right, so uh, you know, I generally, you know, uh, uh, agree with, with, with that kind of where you have uh, the order of those guys. Um, I'm wondering, um, uh, on Dynasty Fever this week, we talked about quarterbacks, and Jesse was much higher. I should say much, but you know, much uh, uh, more optimistic about Danny Dimes, Vanilla Vic, than than I am. He had him at like I think thirteen or fourteen. I have him at at, at eighteen, but I have him at, at eighteen as like a recognition of what could be, and he's kind of at the top of that tier among like Goff cousins and, and Carr, Whereas like Jesse had him at 13 or 14. Cause he's like, Dable unlocked him, uh, you know, mobility plus, you know, uh, plus the passing, which, you know, in his defense, there's like only a certain number of players who have passed for 3000 yards and ran for 700 and, you know, yeah. times is among them in, in, in 2022. So sell me on why I should be more, confident in, in Danny Dimes, and then I've got another question for you. Yeah, I, I think while they don't have any studs on their offense, they do have good weapons to throw to. You got Wandell, Waller now. Last year, they were lacking a good tight end. Daniel Bellinger was their go-to, and that's just... Darren Waller opens up the middle of the field. Um, so I think that's a big thing, Saquon being completely healthy. He's another good target to throw to. I just think there's good weapons, and him, like you said, throwing for 3,000, rushing for 700 with a good young coach. I just I, – I really like his upside. I don't have him as high as Jesse, but I'm at 16 at the end of uh, my third tier. Mm -hmm. So. All right. I I wonder how much of the passing was garbage time and how much of the running was scrambling for his life. You know what I mean? Like Yeah. But, you know, it is what it is, right? I just – there's something about it. I just never have thought he's that good, et cetera. But here's where I – I think maybe where you will agree with me, I don't know, the price, right? If you're in a startup right now, quarterback 16, okay, sure. He's at the 409, right? He's going uh, almost a round and a half ahead of Cousins, almost two rounds ahead of Goff, uh, and like three rounds ahead of Geno Smith, Russell Wilson, Jordan Love, four rounds ahead of Derek Carr. If you're in the fourth round, let's say you've gotten your your stud, right? Then you grabbed, I don't know, running back, wide receiver, whatever, you know, maybe a tight among one of the top tight ends. And you're in the fourth round. Are you grabbing Danny Dimes when you could have uh Najee, Devontae Adams, Hawkinson, Josh Jacobs, DK Metcalf, uh Austin Eckler, like Really? Are we are we doing are we doing that? I, I've done that twice. I've drafted him. I think it was the first start of the fifth round, and the only reason that was is because I waited on quarterback till the third round. So you know, I was at the I was at the end of the draft. You know, got like Jamar Chase, and then got CD Lamb, and I was like, you know, I'll figure it out. And then I got two in the third, and then I went Jones in the fifth. So that's the only way. 
if I draft how I want to, I'm not looking for a quarterback right there. I've already got, you know, Dak or Deshaun Watts as my QB2, maybe Kyler. So ideally, no. That is the hardest part about drafting him is he goes with a lot of studs that can separate you from yeah, the rest of the I, people. I just it's can't tough. do it. Yeah, I can't do it. Like, it's easier when you punt quarterback first two rounds, but if you don't do that, you're, it's a waste of a pick, in my opinion. Yeah. Okay. So uh, my question, uh, question number four, is um, the rookies, right? We talk about where are we slotting the rookies in with everybody else is essentially the question. What are we doing with the rookies, right? Now, it's easy for us to talk about the rookies in the narrow sort of world of a rookie draft and, you know, say how for me it was the church of Anthony Richardson, you know, as, as like the clear choice for, for, the, for the first quarterback that you should take, you know. Uh, but it's a whole other issue when you start to now mix them in with, with the other quarterbacks. So um, – for the record, for uh, the listeners and viewers, um, my quarterbacks from 9 to 17 are Watson Murray, Dak Richardson, tier break, Tua Russ, Bryce, Stroud, Lance, tier break. And then the Dimes Goff Cousins. So, right. That may change. You know, by the end of the offseason, I could see – Maybe Dimes floating up a spot or two. Maybe, you know, um, Lance dropping a, a little bit because I tend to be higher on him uh, than other people. For me, Richardson at 12, I know is a little eh for some people, but it's, it's, it's as we've seen, it's below market, right? Um, you know, he's going as quarterback nine at like the 201, you know, uh, or 202 or whatever. And I just can't do that, right? Uh, but him being at 12 in that tier with Watson, Murray, and, and Dak is, is simply ceiling. You know, it, it's, it's all the reasons that everybody got tired of me talking about why he was the top rookie quarterback this year is why I have him slotted in at, at 12. Um, I have uh, Bryce and Stroud behind guys like Tua and Russ because, let's face it, they're rookies and they're rookie quarterbacks. Like, it's the one position where, you know, we can be the most wrong usually on, on how we, you know, evaluate these guys. And things can go really, really south, right? There's a world in which their weapons are very meh, you know, for, for, for both of them. Um, and so, yeah, I'm nowhere near as – it's one thing to like Bryce Young and C.J. Stroud and Anthony Richardson in a rookie draft. It's a whole other when you're in a startup to now ask me to pay the price that I need to pay for them to get them. I don't want any of them as my QB2, and so I'm going to have very little of them in startup season. And, and just to, to be a little bit more specific for folks, Anthony Richardson, QB9 at the 202. Bryce Young, QB11 at the 210. Uh, Stroud, QB14 at the 305. I'm not paying those prices for them. First of all, because I don't want any of them to be my QB2. But second of all, I just don't see, you know, taking a rookie as your QB2 ahead of some of the guys you can take that, you know, go by names like Garrett Wilson and Christian McCaffrey and, you know, Brees Hall and Jonathan Taylor. And, you know, if you're a Gibbs person and Tyreek Hill and Kelsey, like, what are we doing, folks? Like, yeah, like I just – I can't justify having them ranked that high, but I especially can't justify paying that ADP, ADP price for them, especially that ADP price relative to the guys you're skipping and missing out on by taking them. I don't like any of the rookies at ADP. I'm glad I, I, I grabbed a few shares of, of, of all of them, mostly Richardson you know, uh, in rookie draft season because I'm not getting any of them in startup. No, I agree 100%. I have them ranked similarly. I have Richardson at 12, and that's just due to his upside, and then Young at 14, Stroud 15. And I, I was tempted to put Stroud above Young, but I just I don't trust the weapons in Houston as much as I do the ones in Carolina. I mean, neither one's sexy. They're all like a crowded room of, you know, mediocre dudes, but – like having Miles Sanders better. So I agree with that. I'm also have not any of the startups I've done. I've not landed a single rookie quarterback. I've got them all in rookie drafts. 
So I agree with you there. Even though I have them ranked pretty high, you're, the only way I'm drafting them as a starter is if I'm not looking to win this year and you can start out getting one of them and then Kyler, you know, something like that. But any, any win now team, I'm not drafting them in a startup. I mean, yeah, you'd have to like consciously punt, you know, yeah. and say, you know, well, here's the thing, right? So we say that, but I also say to people, don't really make any decisions about your team until after, until after, just draft for value and then see what you got yeah. and figure it out, right? I mean, you, you uh, can and make go from it there. Work. But like, but if you, but chances are, chances are, my dear, if you're taking one of these rookies as, as your QB2, Unless you're following that up by getting like a Goff or a Russ Wilson, you know, to to secure to secure some floor as a temporary QB two, which then also means you sacrifice, right? Because you've got to take that third quarterback earlier. The, if you're not doing that, then then you're more than likely not not really competing in, in 2023, and then you're left with the idea of you didn't compete in 2023. Okay, so you get high capital, may, maybe not high enough capital to get Caleb Williams. And then on top of that, what if that, you know, what if Bryce Young or Stroud, especially, is a bust? Then you're yeah. double fucked. <laughs> yeah. I just, I can't do it with rookie quarterbacks and startups like that. I just can't. You know? I don't know. No, I, I agree with you on that. But expect, well, rookie, these rookie quarterbacks, right? Like, yeah. I mean, you know, I think I was a little more keen on Trevor Lawrence in startup season, um, fields to a degree. I think I'm going to be pretty much all in on Caleb Williams next year, you know. And Drake May, uh, too. Uh, well, I think Drake May is better than any of the quarterbacks in this class. And I haven't done a ton of research, and he's still yeah. got another year to play it. But That's I've, close. Yeah. yeah. That's close. Um, okay. Uh, bonus content. Speaking of Tua, because I mentioned him as being, like, you know, my 13th at the top of that next tier. Like – if it weren't for the concussion situation and the idea that, like, if one of those wide receivers goes down, you know, his production goes down a lot, I'd probably have him at, like, 11, um, maybe 10, maybe. I'd, I'd, I'd have him above Deshaun Watson. I'd have him at, so, at the end of that the end of that next year after the top eight. That's where I'd have him if he was no concussions. So – is it, is, it like, is it like just the concussions thing? And, 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 and is that valid enough? Because the way I was explaining it to Jesse, the difference between him and Kyler is like Kyler can recover and be 80, 90 percent of the runner he was. And we, we're still going to like him Tua's career could instantly end mm-hmm. with a hit. And I think I don't know, like it's, it's real. Like you can't pretend that's not real, you know? Yeah, I think I think honestly it really hit home to me when the DeMar Hamlin stuff happened and you realize just how like delicate people you can actually be out there and how quickly things can change. So I think after seeing that and watching him just like stumble on the field, just trying to stand up, it is kind of scary. And that is that's I put that in a similar vein as like a serious neck injury. It's like one of those things that you're probably, if he keeps getting concussions and he's not going to have a full career, because I just don't think it'd be worth it to do that to yourself. So I think it's different than having like most other injuries and having as many as he had in one year. So hopefully they protect him. He doesn't have any this year. And then it, if he doesn't have any this year, I'm not worried about it. But if he keeps having them, then it's definitely something to be worried about. I, I mean, uh, I'm the, sorry, real quick, the main knock to him was he can't push the ball down the field, but with his weapons and the new coach McDaniel, he was first in yards for attempt and he was absolutely lighting it up. So if he's healthy, I think he's got to be top ten. He he doesn't have a great arm, but when he does throw deep, it's mm-hmm. it's accurate. Yep. He's got he's got an accurate deep ball. Um, okay, uh, your your fourth question. Okay. So, yeah, my next two are going to be on kind of like the end of quarterbacks I want on my team, and this is getting into QB three territory, maybe QB two if you absolutely punt it. Uh, but this next one I'm going to do is the decision between Mac Jones and Kenny Pickett. Mm-hmm. And I can almost promise you I'm in the minority here. I have Mac Jones higher. Uh, I have Mac Jones at 23, Kenny Pickett at 25. I don't have bulletproof right here available. What What's bulletproof on those two? Am I, do I have them swapped? Because I figure Pickett goes well before Mac Jones. Uh, Pickett's like a 
six rounder, I think. Hold on a second. Uh, yeah, hell no. Uh, no, wait, hold on. Yeah, Kenny Pickett is at the six ten, and Mac Jones is at the nine eleven. Oh my god! Yep, especially he was at the nine twelve earlier in the week when I was talking to Jesse. So wait, he's uh, moving <laughs> up. He's moving up. Right. I hope so that, after this episode airs, he's up to nine ten. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it really comes down to Mac Jones. He looks unimpressive. There are memes him coming out of how unimpressive like his physique is. But the dude can throw the ball and he can throw it accurately. I much like Russell Wilson, I'm kind of discounting all of last year because they had Matt Patricia as their offensive coordinator. He has no business running that offense. And I think for a while they didn't even have an offensive coordinator. So that offense was just kind of a mess. They didn't have good weapons. All they have is three or four running backs that they want to give the ball to. That's changed. They got Juju now. They got um, – they signed a tight end. Who was it? Gesicki. Yep, they have Gesicki now. Him and Hunter Henry, I think, are a lot better than Johnny Smith and uh, whoever they had last year. I think that's who it was. But I like his weapons. I think he's a much better passer than Kenny Pickett, and I think the offense is – offense might go to Pickett because they upgraded the offensive line. But I think Mac Jones is going to take a step forward, and he's just really accurate with the ball. I can't remember the exact stat, but his rookie year, him and Justin Herbert were the only ones to have a certain amount of pass attempts and pass over 65% completions as a rookie. Mm. And I don't I don't think that's a fluke. I think he's going to bounce back. I think they have an actual offensive coordinator now. So I have Mac Jones ahead, and I'm buying the dip. Right on. No, I, I, I agree with you, right? Like, So I have this huge tier of quarterbacks um, after that after that Jones-Goff-Cousins-Carr bunch. I have a tier of 22 to 30 of like, I don't know, this could go either way. And Mac is 24 and uh, Pickett's 25, right? So it's, you know, Mac by a hair, yeah. but they're but they're up towards the the top the top of that tier. I, I, I agree with you. I think when you bring in like, you know, whatever you want to say about Bill O'Brien as a GM and a head coach, it, he's an offensive coordinator, right? Yeah. And also he's not, checks notes, Matt Patricia, who was a defensive coordinator, right? There, there is a slight, even if it's slight, there's an improvement uh, in, in the weapons. Like, there's almost no way in which Mac Jones doesn't have a better season in yep. 2023 than he did in, in 2022. Is he going to light it on fire? No. Is he vanilla? Yes. Is he all floor, no ceiling? Absolutely. Is he like a technician, game manager-ish kind of guy? Sure. Yeah. You know? But when you're asking about, like, what do you want in your QB3 and you get that plus the young age, you could, you could do a lot worse as, yep. as your QB3 in a startup. And then when you talk about the dip, that's where it really it, it seals the deal for me. But you're, you're telling me that Mac Jones is a late ninth round pick? Okay, maybe in a vacuum he is. But when it's two and a half rounds behind Goff, when it's three and a half rounds – buying Kenny Pickett, then I like the price. Yeah, you know? I'm just going to give you all a uh, piece of advice. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Do not draft Kenny Pickett in the sixth round. Just yeah. please don't. Now, the case the case for Pickett, you, you talked about it. The offensive arrow is pointing up. They improved the offensive line. They look better at the end of the year. You know, is there a world in which two years from now, Kenny Pickett is still the quarterback for the Steelers and Mac Jones isn't the quarterback for the Patriots? Sure. Yeah. But this whole, like... Bailey Zappi is going to take his job stuff. I, I, to me personally, I think it's kind of, it's kind of nuts, but, um, but yeah, I, I think, I think there's also a world in which, you know, they're, they're just about even, you know, for like the rest of their career, you know, and, 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 and they're just, you know, the quarterback three, you know, if you're, if you have to use them as quarterback two in a pinch, you know, whatever, but, uh, but yeah, you know, that's kind of that's kind of I mean, where where I have them, you know. The, the deciding factor to me, and I try not to make college into it too much. So like Mac Jones, his two years starting, he was really good both years. Kenny Pickett had one good year out of four in college, and it was his senior year. So it's kind of hard to tell if that was a fluke yeah. or if that was legit, right. and if he's actually legit. But this year, people, we should see. And people who watch college ball, you know, did say like it. I don't want to say it came out of nowhere. But they were surprised, and, you know, they credit Jordan Addison with a lot of that yeah. as well, you know. So, you know, listen, I know Mac Jones played on a on a juggernaut Alabama team too, but, you know, it, it's it's worth saying that, you know, he has Alabama pedigree and, you know, Kenny Pickett does not. 
But on a juggernaut team like that, Jalen Hurts got benched for not playing well. The guy behind you is better than most other quarterbacks. So if you're not playing like playing elite, you're going to get benched, and he did. So no, that, that's that's a fair point, right? Uh, so I think I'm on my last question of yep. the night, and that is what to do with these three veterans, Gino, Rogers, and Stafford. Uh, so they are all part of that tier of 22 to 30 that I have. Um, I know the world likes Gino more than I do. Uh, I have Gino at 23, uh, Stafford at 22, and Rogers at 27. Um, let's take Rogers first. I will admit that my hatred for him as a human being may be coloring a little bit of where I have him ranked. Um, you know, it's a tier, so tier's a tier. But he is five spots below Stafford. Like, yeah, you know. Um, he's 39, right? Uh, and while, yes, he did have, you know, some injuries and kind of some I, I don't care, you know, things last year, like, you know, kind of a, a you know, uh, going through the motions season last year. I also think that a 39-year-old Aaron Rodgers uh, isn't very good, you know. Uh, relative to some of these other quarterbacks that we're talking about. So when I see him ranked at, like, you know, for some people, like quarterback 17, 19, I'm like, what are we doing here? Um, you know, and so I just – I mean, obviously, if you have him, you're not trading him. Nobody's taking him. You, Although with Garrett Wilson and the change of scenery, if you're not a – if you're not competing in 2023, you can probably get more than a second for Rodgers at this point, even if it was just a second and a third. Um, you know, uh, but uh, I, I'm like, I just, I see almost no reason to take him in a startup unless he's like, like a desperation QB three because, oh shit, it's the whatever round that I don't have my third quarterback yet. Um, or it's a take him and trade him uh, kind of thing. But, like, I'm, like, essentially out on Rodgers. I know I'm probably going to eat my words halfway through 2023 when he's slinging it to Garrett Wilson like he did Devontae Adams. But the question is, what happens in 2024? Right. Similar question for Matthew Stafford, what happens in 2024? He's a few years younger, right? Um, but at the same time, you know, I, you know he's throwing a Cooper Cup. Uh, I think he has, you know, probably a better offensive mind as a coach. Yes, their elbow back, you know, talked about retirement. But I feel safer with Stafford uh, producing and gaining a little more value this year than I do with Rodgers, and so that reflects the rank. The, the one that I think people will disagree with the most is having Geno in that tier, having Geno as low as 23, having Geno below guys like Stafford and Goff and, Coff, Goff and Cousins. Right. And I'm just cautious with Gino. Like, he's 32. He's a one year wonder. Second half, Gino was, or towards the end of the year, Gino was very different from early year Gino. His, um, uh, what is it, turnover worthy plays or whatever, right? Like, that rate was, was high for a guy that you want to put that much stock into. Like, listen, could you do worse? Yeah. But do you really feel confident if he's your QB2? Like, I know some people say, like, he's the first guy I want after the elite guys. I don't know. I can't justify taking him over Russ. I can't justify taking him over Goff. Now, could I change my tune? Will this look different when he starts throwing to those three weapons, you know, that he has, like, you know, uh, JSN and, and DK and Lockett? Sure. Yeah. Is there also a world in which, you know, um, their run percentage over expectation increases a little bit with Sharps there? Sure, there's that too. I just think there's enough questions for me with Gino to not confidently have him with Goff and Cousins and Russ the way that the way that the, the community seems to do. So for those of you listening at home or watching at home, uh, so Gino is going at the 707, uh, one pick ahead of Russ, and that's at QB 21. So only a little bit higher than I have him, lower than I think he is in some other places, right? Uh, DLF, uh, Gino is going uh, at QB 19 
uh, ahead of uh, Goff, Carr, Russ, Rogers, right? Um, and I just, I just can't do it. Um, what do you think about uh, Gino, and especially when it comes to price and how confident you are in him when we compare him to Rogers at the 807, Carr at the 808, and uh, Stafford at the 1104? Yeah, I, I have Stafford 24 and Gino 19. So that's a small difference there. I would much rather at price have Stafford. Stafford is the one that I'm the most excited about, even though I have him ranked behind Gino. The, the reason I have Gino where I do is he did kind of fall off the second half, but he wasn't terrible. He was about a 20, like a QB 20 the second half, and that's about where I have him. So you do kind of got to bake in that it is a one year. That might be what you'll get more times than not, but as long as he's not terrible, I'm fine with having him there because he's still got three really good wide receivers and two really good running backs now. So I think the weapons around him, even if he's not great, it'll be fine. Uh, I'd rather have Stafford there. He's got a great coach, cut back. Um, Aaron Rodgers, I have Aaron Rodgers at 30 behind Sam Howell and Brock Purdy, who I'll talk about next. But I, the dude could go in a cave and take ayahuasca and never play football again after this year. And I think you got to bake that in. He was so wishy-washy this year. Like, if they don't, if they don't like, make a big Super Bowl run, he might just be done and just say he's done. So – that's it. Redraft, I'm going to have him ranked, you know, late teens. But in Dynasty, I'm being almost – how old is he? 40, you said? I think he's, 30, I think he's already 39. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you just – I don't think he's Tom Brady. I don't think he has the same skill set, so I don't think he's going to stay around as long as Tom Brady. So I'm, that's the only reason I have him 30. He'll be fine this year with his weapons. But after this year, I don't think he's going to be in the league. He will indeed be 40 at December 2nd. Yeah, that's – I'm out on that. Like you said, I have him 30th, so if he's somehow still there and when all the guys that have form are gone, I'll take a shot. But And honestly, if I take him, his first blow-up week where he has four or five touchdowns, I'm trading him. Mm-hmm. So he's not someone I'm going to have on my team at the end of the year if I draft him. I mean, Stafford's going after Will Levis, people. Like, yeah. I get the age thing, but come on, y'all. Two rounds yeah. after Will Levis, come it's- on. Stafford has always been pretty open about his injuries. He'll tell you when he's hurt, but going to play anyways. He said he's felt better this preseason than he has in a little while. So I'm going to take I'm going to take that and run with it and take him at the discount. Um, so my last one, the very end of my QB three tier, is Desmond Ritter, Brock Purdy, and Sam Howell. So I have them ranked. I have Ritter the highest at 26. I am a Falcons fan, so I'll just say that. But I have I have Purdy at 28 and Howell at 29. So they're all pretty close, all in the same tier, so that could all fluctuate pretty quickly. Um, the case for Ritter is the fact that his four games he started, he threw no interceptions. I don't think he lost a fumble. And for a rookie, not turning the ball over is key. I do think they'll still run the ball a lot. But I think the fact that he's shown he can protect the ball, he's not going to give away points and give you too many negatives. They got really good weapons. They got Drake London, Kyle Pitts, Bijan. I think that's pretty good crew there to throw the ball to. And I'll say pretty for last. So Howell, I like him. People are talking about on Twitter like he's mobile. I don't think he's mobile, but I think he can run if he needs to. So I don't don't draft him thinking you're going to get a ton of rushing yards. Um, the main thing is his weapons. You know, he has three good receivers, Curtis Samuel, Dotson, and Terry McLaurin. I'm higher on how old the most. A lot of people have him in the 30s. I think he's going to be the starter. I think he's going to finish the year as a starter. And on that team with Gibson and Robinson, I think he's going to produce. And Purdy is probably the hardest person to rank for me right now because I have Trey Lance ranked higher. I, have, I think Trey Lance should be the starting quarterback. But Kyle Shanahan's the coach, so he makes the decisions. And from what we've seen, it looks like they're going to put Purdy out there. I don't know why, but it kind of seems like they don't want to take this with a grain of salt. It seems like they don't want to put in the work to make Trey Lance a good quarterback. seems like a project. And yep, as we've seen, they can just throw Purdy out there. He'll be just okay. But that's all you need to be with that defense, that weapon. You just got to know who to get the ball to and when to throw it to him. 
Freddy can do that. So I might have to move him up if he starts and starts the first three or four games because he does have arguably the best weapons on any team. When you talk about full team like build with really good defense, really good weapons on offense, you don't have to do much to be successful with in, in San Francisco. So, yeah. So I think the the community, if you will, is roughly with us on on that. Um, I, I, I'm still looking at Will Levis going around ahead of Desmond Ritter and saying, "What are we What are we doing, yeah. folks?" But. Um, you know, they've got uh, Ritter at 29 at the 10-10 and Howell at 30 at the 10-12. Um, but there's a lot of Purdy love out there, though. Hold on a sec. He is going uh, at the 9.09. So is he going ahead of Trey Lance? No. Lance is still holding strong there in the late sixth. You know, there's, there's yes. people who still have faith. So – Wanna, like So let's unpack this a little bit. Ritter, I agree with you. There's a reason for optimism for the reasons you said. Um, the pass rate went up by a few attempts per game when he was in there. He threw the ball more accurately and better than Mariota did. Weapons, weapons, weapons. And, by the way, they're probably not going to be bad enough no. to be in on any of these really good 2024 quarterbacks. So you kind of think he's probably – unless he, like, poops the bed and – Taylor Heineke takes over, you know, Ritter's probably your 2024 Atlanta Falcons starter, right? Um, Howell, I'm less certain about probably, but at the same time, I do like him, right? Um, there are people who he had a hive. He had a, he had a QB1 of the 2022 class hive coming out of, out of college. There are people who do think he does have like that rushing floor, um, I think he was my QB two that year. Um, so I could see it, you know, I could see him getting into that level of like and Ritter into that like, you know, Goff cousins car level, you know, in a year or two where that's they're okay, we're comfortable with them as like, you know, a low end QB two or, or something like that. The Purdy thing, you know, I, I'm I'm on record as hating Purdy and that sort of thing, but that leads me to the question of like what are we doing with Trey Lance? Yeah. Right? Because not only is Purdy going to be the starter, but rumor has it, or sources say, he's probably behind Darnold now too, right? And there are some folks who say, okay, well, X, is Y, and Z, that's one thing. But if you can't beat out Sam Darnold for your number two, go, shush. Because Sam Darnold is a Kyle Shanahan quarterback just like Purdy is. He is that sort of like button pusher puppet sort of guy and a guy who Shanahan really likes, by the way. And I think uh, from what I heard, I think it was Cecil Lammy uh, on um, on football guys on the on the audible talking about like that's at one point when when uh, Donald was I, I, I don't know if he was on the Jets or whether he was on the trading block with the Panthers. Anyway, at one point, like the 49ers were flirting with sending a first round pick for Sam Donald because Kyle Shanahan likes him so much. So t- for me personally, if Lance doesn't beat out Darnold for the QB2, it's not because Sam Darnold is a better quarterback, Lance is a bust, and it- it's a failure and all hope is lost. It's because of Kyle Shanahan. Real life stuff matters. And at that point, if he becomes the QB3, I don't know. Are they going to trade him? Who knows? I'd love if they finally traded him. But talking about buying the dip, his value is going to crater when if he becomes the QB three and I'm I, and I'll eat it up because I because yeah. you know he was twenty coming out or like barely twenty one he's only thrown four hundred and fifty passes since high school like he's got to develop sure he's been working on his pass mechanics he's got rushing upside in games where you know there wasn't like you know a storm and where he didn't like shatter his ankle go look at his points per game. They're pretty good for the, for, you know, despite being, you know, raw and, and an FCS quarterback and that sort of thing. You know, I have Lance at 17. Um, he's like the last, for me, he's the last of the high upside guys, right? I have him at 17 and then boom, and that's when you have dimes, cousin, etc. cetera. Um, you know, I could see sneaking dimes up into that, like probably by the end of the end of the off season, it, it's going to happen. Although I still won't pay the price that people are paying for dimes. 
But for me, that's like last house on the block, last really high upside quarterback that I could see a world in which at some point Lance is in up in like you know the, the that like fourteen to sixteen range uh, uh, again. I, what are you doing with Lance? Right now, I'm moving down to twenty two just because he's not starting. So I had to have yeah. some of these other guys who are actually starting ahead of him. But if you already have him on your team, you definitely have to hold. The market's just going to get worse for him. But if you don't have him, and he's not – once the season starts, I say wait a little bit and it's shown that he's not starting. I say go and put some offers in for him. You know, start with maybe late second, early third round. Just see what people are willing to give you for him and take it and just let him sit on your roster because I do think he by far has the most upside in that group. And I agree with you about Darnold. I have Darnold at 33 right behind Tannehill. He's basically the first of the backups because if something happens to Purdy and he starts, I've always been pretty high on Darnold. I don't like like the landing spot with the Jets, but in San Francisco, Kyle Shanahan, I think he can be a good quarterback because last year when he came back with the Panthers without much of a team around him, he looked decent. He looked a lot better than people expected. Some games actually looked good. So if Kyle Shanahan likes him, I like him. That's all I need to hear. So I, I agree with you that I think he's second on the depth chart, which makes it really bad for people who have Lance. Luckily, I don't have too many shares of Lance, so. All right, one more bonus content. One might say, Brian, there's also the jury is still out on Jordan Love. And there's perhaps as much proof, in other words, very little, that uh, Jordan Love can't play football as there is very little proof that Trey Lance can't play football. You must give Jordan Love a chance too. Why do you have Trey Lance at 17 and Jordan Love at 29? What are you doing with Jordan Love? The community, by the way, loves love, right? He's going at the 7-10 quarterback 23, right? Ahead of uh, Rodgers, Carr, Ritter, Howell, Stafford, Purdy, Mac Jones, who, by the way, on DLF is, I just saw a quarterback 30. Like, come on, give me a break. Um, and uh, on on uh, and on DLF, Jordan Love, um Let's see, is going at, uh, I lost it, where is it? Uh, quarterback 17, right between Dimes and Cousins, ahead of Geno. Uh, I think on KTC, he's, uh, he's 17 last I checked. On Fantasy Calc, he's 19. Why, first of all, where are you on Love? And is my gap between Lance and Love justifiable? I think so. I have Love at 27 behind Pickett and Ritter. And that is just because I don't know what to expect. Watson's his best option, but even Watson can be inconsistent and is kind of unpolished. I don't know what the weapons are going to be like. I don't know how good he's going to be. But I do like him. I traded for him in a league where I have Kyler as my QB2. I traded trade away Rashad White and at 24 first for Jordan Love and Najee Harris. Okay. So basically just a, a kind of a throw in with Rashad White. So I think he's a good QB2 if you have Kyler. Otherwise, if he's not a QB3, I'm not super happy. I'm probably trying to upgrade my QB2. So I think he's a good QB3. Or um, QB2 if you have Kyler just to okay. fill in for the first start of the year. So you have him, I guess, what is that, uh, seven spots behind Blitz? I have like the difference of 12 and it skips a couple tiers. Am I, am I, is my gap between Lance and love too big? Like, should I be, should I be treating them more similar in the fact that they're both unknowns? Yeah. And one's actually starting and the other's behind Sam Darnold and behind two quarterbacks that he's not that are not as good as him is what I'm trying to say. And while I disagree with that, that is reality. So I think that might be a kind of a wide gap. So would you? So if you were me, you would lower Lance, not necessarily raise Love. Yeah, I, I had trouble lowering, lowering Lance any more than I did, and I only went to twenty one. I had him before Carr, and Mac Jones, and Stafford, behind Russell Wilson, Geno, and Goff. Okay, so let me ask you a question. You're in a startup. Mm-hmm. Let's say you've got two QBs you're happy with. However, like maybe not two of the elite ones, but you got two QBs you're happy with. Jordan Love in the set at the late seventh. Mac Jones in the late ninth. 
Desmond Ritter in the late 10th. Out of those, probably Mac Jones in the ninth. If yeah. not that, I'm getting Safford in the 11th, like you said. That's yeah. QB3. But out of those, I think Mac Jones. Ritter, I said Ritter doesn't make mistakes, but he also doesn't have that high of a ceiling. So I don't think he's great. He's just sure. not gonna he's just not gonna hurt you with turnovers. So all right, let's say you got your stud quarterback. Um but it, you were in the early first, so by the time I got back to you, there was the rookies, and you didn't want to do that. Um, you kind of didn't want to take a chance on Kyler. So you're kind of lingering now, and you don't have that second quarterback. Danny Dimes in the late fourth. Jared Goff in the mid-sixth. Gino or Russ in the seventh? I'll take Goff in the sixth. Okay. Jo- Jones in the fourth is early. If I could get – if Jones fell to the fifth, that's where I've drafted him before. I'm happy with that. But the fourth is just too early. For some reason – I don't know what it is, but something about the fifth round for Daniel Jones just feels right. But if he's not there in the fifth, I'm going to wait until the sixth. So it sounds like based on startup ADP, we think – People are too high on Pickett, Jordan Love, Will Levis, possibly Aaron Rodgers, and it seems to well, and also the rookies, right? Yeah, yeah. And are, and they're too low on probably I'd say um, Kyler, uh, Russ for me, maybe less so for you. Uh, certainly Mac Jones in the late ninth and Stafford in the 11th. So, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Brian Tannehill bonus content, <laughs> <laughs> uh, quarterback 34 in the 14th round at bulletproof ADP. There's a world in which the Titans are ass cheeks. They're one in five and they say, let's give Will Levis the keys and see what happens. There's also a world in which Vrabel's a solid coach. Tannehill remains a pretty average quarterback in the 14th round, remains a value. But at his age, and with Levis behind him, and that lack of weapons, I can't bring myself to put him with Mac, Pickett, Ritter, Jordan Love, Purdy, Howell. I got him down with Jimmy G, Darnold, Levis, and Baker. Um Same. Am I okay? All right, I just wanted to check what you're doing with Tannehill. Yeah. No, I'm with you, and I've seen rumors how, and this is just Twitter rumors, so definitely probably doesn't even mean anything. How they're looking to sign. Hopkins. Wait, hold on, hold on a second. Tell the folks about the rumors so that way they don't have to read it and it doesn't eat into their 600 limit. That's true. If you see anything about DeAndre Hopkins to the Titans, that's bad for everybody, and probably don't believe it. But if he did go there, I think that just boost Ryan Tannehill a little bit because it shows that they're still trying to win. Yeah. And I think they know they're not going to do that with the West, So, All right, folks. So that's going to be it for us. We had some cues at QB and we answered them and I hope we kind of sussed out and unpacked some some value for uh, uh, for you. Uh, since this is a pre-record, there's no chat. Throw some comments in there. Tell us why we are wrong on Gino and love tell Brian why he is still holding on to the, the Trey Lance dream and why that's uh, why that's stupid. Uh, I don't know. Right. Uh, but uh, subscribe, rate and review on the going for two li- um, live podcast audio feed here on the YouTube channel. Subscribe to the channel, like comment, turn the notifications on feed the algorithm, what it must be fed. <laughs> uh, Go to goingfor2.com. Uh, lots of rankings and articles there. Little bottom right, the little purple thing for the uh, Discord. Lots of channels. Scott Fishbowl mocks like, you know, like it's our job. Um, so uh, time for plugs. Josh, what's up with you? Yep. You can find me on Twitter at Rotonaut, R-O-T-O-N-A-U-T. And the best, one of the good places to come with comments is in the Discord. We have our own channel in there for uh, Saturday Night Five. So come in there, give us thoughts. You think we're wrong? You think we're right? You think you want to tell us how awesome we are? That's fine too. 
Um, but yeah, you can find me on Twitter. You can find rankings articles at goingfor2.com. All right. You can find me on Twitter, FFJuggy underscore Dynasty Fever, midweek audio podcast at Dynasty Fever Pod. Doing a little bit of work for RPO football. Going to try to increase that in the summer. I just can't seem to find the time. Uh, Goingfor2.com articles and rankings. Uh, and uh, starting to outline a little bit this like big series on running backs that I want to write. Uh, and by the time this airs, it'll probably be old news, but uh, on Wednesday, I'm going to talk to uh, Tyler O on a JWB show about buys and sells. Hey, man, enjoy your live Scott Fishbowl experience, which will just kind of be wrapping up and you'll be on your way home when people are watching this on Saturday. What, what draft slot do you have? It, it, we're, it'll be decided there. I signed up Ooh. for the 101 so I could get Mahomes or Hurts or Allen, but it's going to be like a little 100-yard dash type thing, and then whoever wins that gets to pick their slot. So I have oh, no idea. Oh, my division's keeping what we picked. We're not doing We're not doing that. We're like, you know. Part of me likes that. Part of me likes not knowing. It helps with the mocks. I can jump in at any spot. Yeah, yeah. But it, it would be kind of nice to have an idea of what I'm going to do. But yeah. let me yeah. say this for Live drafts are wild. Don't so don't expect you're gonna get like how the mocks go. It's not gonna be like that. I've I got never one eleven last year. What who'd you get one eleven? Lamar Jackson at the one eleven mm-hmm. last year. So it didn't end up working out, but at the time he was the fourth best quarterback in consensus ranking. So I've never actually done an in person draft. None of my home leagues ever did like an in person. This will be my first experience doing it. I'm gonna be doing the New York City one. That's next week. Awesome. Yeah. So. No, I don't know if it's the alcohol, people being with other people. I know you don't drink, but <laughs> things just really, like, yeah. the live drafts are just, they get weird. Not yeah. like a weird, like, actual weird way, but the ADP gets thrown off real quickly. All right. All right, folks. Um, that's a wrap. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And go Irish. Go Braves.